Hey guys, Trev here from SpineWise and today I want to talk to you if you're suffering neck pain and if that neck pain may not be finding a solution, like you've had treatment on it for a while and it just keeps coming back, uh, maybe it's just not even responding. So what I talked to you about is what are some of the top reasons that people fail in the standard traditional musculoskeletal type therapies in terms of trying to deal with their neck pain because we see this quite commonly with people who have been to various practitioners um, and basically sometimes these neck problems are not actually from the neck itself it can be from many other areas of the human body so let me run through a few of those here with you today so the top of the list one of the main reasons that we people see people fail in terms of or don't respond as well as they should in terms of dealing with their neck pain is problems with the jaw and the main reason for that is when we start looking at jaw function the mandible itself, which is this area here, moves in unison with the second cervical vertebrae. So as the jaw moves, the second cervical vertebrae tends to move with it, uh, and this can actually keep causing misalignments in the neck and altered biomechanics of the neck. Um, and the TMJ can be something that's very, very hard to diagnose as a problem, especially if you're not highly trained in the area, simply because it's not really a true joint. What we have is two surfaces that tend to slide over each other, rather than actually having a nice hinge joint that we'd see with something like a shoulder or a hip. So actually palpating it and feeling that movement can actually be a bit of a problem for, um, uh, for many people who aren't properly trained in the area. The next most common thing we see is fatigue. And fatigue is a big, big problem. You see, we have our neck muscles coming down the back here down the back of the neck and basically these things are responsible for holding you upright and even if you have a slight shift in posture which takes your head position from here slightly forward this can create a huge amount of extra workload on those muscles and even if there's a slightest level of fatigue in your musculoskeletal system then what we can see is these start to fatigue really really quickly as they hold you up uh, and this can create a lot of inflammation a lot of changes in function throughout that area of your spine as well. So fatigue is another common reason we see these things. And I'll talk to you about things you can do about these uh, a little bit later on. Inflammation is another big one. So chronic inflammation, I'm not talking about how you've injured your neck and now it's swollen, I'm talking about systemic inflammation. So if you've ever woken up in the morning and you find those first few steps are a little bit stiff and anky, most likely you've got systemic inflammatory responses going on. And these can come from diet, they can come from physiological processes, they can also come from immune responses as well. So it's important to look down that path to make sure we're not having a chronic systemic inflammatory problem. Uh, because if we do that, then uh, localized therapies often don't, uh, don't resolve the issue. Next one is pelvic function. Most importantly, what we're talking about is uh, the changes in your lumbar spine and your sacroiliacs. So we follow this all the way down. We're going to kind of pretend this is our thoracic spine here. We follow it all the way down here into our lumbar spine and into our pelvis through the bottom there. Uh, what we see is that when we have um, changes in the lumbar spine through this bottom area here, or if we have changes um, into the actual sacroiliacs, which are these back joints here, it tends to change the way your neck extensors work. So I'm going to simplify it down. So when these joints tend to lock, they often tend to lock in a posterior fashion. So if we keep the spine straight and then we tilt backwards, we're looking at the sky. So one of the ways the brain gets around it then is turn the neck muscles off. That drops the head forward, allows you to look straight again. But now what we have is a shift in our neck extensor or our neck position itself. We have an anterior head carriage. So lower problems in the spine, your lumbar spine and in the pelvis itself, especially when your sacroiliac joints, can change the, again the way that these neck extensor muscles fire. And this is a very important thing if you're going to be preventing uh, neck issues long term. Next one goes even further down and that is our feet. There's a couple of big issues that happen with our feet. So the first one, the obvious one is pronation. For those who uh, roll in, uh, this changes the hip orientation, can also change shoulder orientation and put pressure in the neck itself. The other one which a lot of people don't talk much about is what we call functional hallux limitus. And this is where the big toe doesn't move as effectively as it should when you walk. And this can change our gait mechanisms and also has been shown to influence neck pain itself. Uh, and I've done a ton of videos on functional hallux limitus. So you can go into our uh, library and have a look at that and where we discuss that stuff in detail. Shoulder blade instability, so scapular instability. Sorry about my writing, they've gone a bit funny there. Um, scapular instability is basically when your shoulder blades don't sit on the chest wall very effectively. 
So when they don't sit on that chest wall very effectively, um, we get this uh, movement that occurs. This often creates nerve entrapments uh, and we get muscular spasms to try and stabilize that as well, especially again in these neck extensors, which can create problems. And one of the other big ones that's often mistaken is vestibular dysfunction. And whilst we usually associate vestibular dysfunction with things like hearing loss and dizziness and balance problems, these type of things, lightheadedness, fogginess, the other thing that can happen is if you're having vestibular issues, often what will end up happening if they're very mild, is people will just hold their head tilted slightly all the time. And this again changes muscular um, orientation, uh, creates developmental problems in some people, alters jaw function again, and once again can put uh, changes in function in all these neck muscles as well. So there's some of the top reasons that we see in practice here in our office when people are failing from neck issues, some of the things that we need to look through and assess with them. So where do we go with this? Okay, so the first thing we need to understand is that when we're having neck problems, we don't wanna limit the assessment to the neck. We need to have a broad understanding of the entire human body. So if we see someone with neck pain, we're checking their feet, we're asking questions about their diet, uh, we're looking at their fatigue patterns, we're looking at their posture, we're looking at their jaw, uh, we're looking at their neurological findings, because we need that broad assessment to be able to work out all the different components that are contributing to this person so that we can get to the root cause as quickly as possible. Second one, nutrition. Don't discount nutrition. Nutrition is really important. So when we start talking about nutrition, really what we're talking about is these two big things, fatigue and inflammation. Uh, and we know that if our insulin levels are elevated and we have poor fat metabolism, this can change what we call prostaglandin production and the result of that is inflammation. Uh, and sometimes that can also result in um, uh, lower endurance as well. And our type one aerobic muscles are the ones that we often see that are affected most by that. And these are our postural muscles that keep us upright have a full neurological assessment. Okay, this is really important. And we're not just talking about pathology. Yes, you can get disc issues, you can get nerve entrapments, you can get problems from the nerves coming through the neck into the arms. But we're also talking about it from a functional perspective. Make sure your vestibular system is assessed. Make sure your eye function is assessed, your hearing is assessed. All of these things can, again, as we alluded to here before, can contribute to changes in neck function and may also be the cause of just even a subtle shift in your neck health. Um, and as well as this, we haven't really gone into it here, but part of this is vascular as well. So we can, can get uh, irritation, we can get damage to blood vessels, especially in the, in the back part of the neck, which can be alluding to major vascular issues going on. And sometimes the only symptoms for that are neck pain and that's it. Um, and the other one that we wanna really include in there is make sure you get your feet assessed. Uh, and this should be part of every person's assessment when they start talking about neck function, just because pronation of the feet uh, and functional hallux limitus changes within the big toe can create huge problems with people with neck problems that sometimes go completely unnoticed and leave people in, in pain for many, many years as a result. So anyway, guys, there's a quick look at all the different things that we see here that can cause uh, neck pain that have nothing really to do with the neck. Um, and some steps that you can take to make sure, even if you are seeing a practitioner, to make sure that they go through and properly assess you and get all the details uh, that they need in order to get your neck right. But anyway, guys, if you have any questions with that at all, you're not sure about whether this pertains to you or not, or whether certain circumstances are affecting you, uh, some of the things that may be causing your neck pain, uh, please don't hesitate. My team's always here to help. Just post up below, send me a personal message if you want. I'm always happy to help you in any way that we can. Anyway, guys, in the meantime, have a fantastic week and uh, we'll catch you in the next vid. Bye for now.